Hey guys, how's it going Laura with Garden Answer? Today I wanted to talk to you about companion planting. And I'm not going to get super into detail because it's an enormous subject, there's a lot to it. But I wanted to kind of go over some of the basic reasons why it's beneficial to companion plant in your garden and give you a few examples of what I'm doing in my own garden. In fact, that's why this whole subject came up. Um, I just received this Garden Gem Tomato and a Maisel Basil from Proven Winners to trial this year. These will be available next year. And I know that they're really good companion plants, so I decided to put them in a pot together. And I thought, you know what, this is a great thing to kind of talk with you guys about maybe for some of you who have never done it before. So companion planting is planting things together that benefit each other. So the first example of companion planting is considering the size and growth habit of your plants. So take for example a cucumber. They usually vine out all over the ground. If you decide to trellis that cucumber instead and kind of grow it vertically so that it casts shade on part of your garden, you can then plant greens and uh, spinach, things like that that benefit from a little bit more shade and extend their growing season. Same goes for anything that grows taller, your corn. Um, if you grow sunflowers in your garden, anything that casts shade, then you can kind of plan to put those type of crops that need more shade in those spaces. You can also plan for taller things that are sturdy like your corn and sunflowers to act as trellises for other plants like pole beans. Pole beans love to grow up sunflowers and corn and use them as a trellis. The second example is to plant for weed suppression. So if you decide not to trellis your vine crops, but you let them grow on the ground instead, and you can let them grow next to anything you've got planted, beans or tomatoes or whatever, anything that will cover ground space, it'll block any light and water from reaching that ground, so weeds will have a really hard time growing. And when weeds are growing, they're stealing nutrients from the plants that you want to actually have produce. So if you can plant for weed suppression, that's a really good thing. The third example is to plant herbs and flowers to either attract or repel insects. Herbs are a great one. I mean, we do it on our patios, right? Like lemongrass, rosemary, basil, anything that will repel mosquitoes. So if we take that same principle and apply it in our garden spaces, it'll do the same thing. It'll repel insects from wanting to attack the things that we want to produce vegetables. And that's what I did here in this pot. There's basil surrounding this tomato because basil repels the tomato hornworm, which tomato hornworms can be extremely devastating to a tomato plant. And it's also said that basil um, will help the tomatoes grow better and help the tomatoes taste better. Now I don't know if that's exactly true, but I can believe it. So what happens is that basil smell actually overwhelms the smell of the tomato. So when the insect comes around, all they smell is basil and it kind of confuses them. And then they'll go look for something else because they don't want to feed on basil and they can't smell the tomato over it. You can also plant, like for example, thyme in, with your cabbage, and that will repel the cabbage worm. And then we have our classic garden flowers. So I brought some marigolds home. They look so bright and cheerful, but they do have a very strong fragrance, a fragrance that I had to learn to love, uh, but they repel pests really, really well. Um, and I did bring home several of them so that I could have kind of a mass of them in one spot in my garden. I have noticed a lot of aphids in my uh, garden so far, not in my vegetable garden yet. So I brought all of these home as a preventative. But then you have things like zinnias. Uh, zinnias don't repel insects, they actually attract ladybugs, which is a good thing. If you can bring ladybugs into your space, the ladybugs, they decimate insects, like soft-bodied insect pests like aphids. And then I brought some nasturtiums home, which this is a really interesting one because these act as a host plant. Uh, so aphids are extremely attracted to these. So if aphids are a problem for you, and they are for me, like on cabbage, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, plant some of these nearby, all the aphids will like glom onto this nasturtium plant instead of being on the things that you want to harvest, making it really easy to treat and get rid of the aphids. And the last example is to consider root depth of all your vegetables to maximize nutrient efficiency. You don't want to plant a bunch of shallow rooted vegetables together, otherwise they'll be competing for all the nutrients at the same level under the soil. Instead, you want to take a look at all the things you're going to grow in your garden, figure out how deep all of their roots grow, and then organize your space based on that to maximize what your plants can take up. So let's say, for example, you wanna grow lettuce, tomatoes, and carrots. Lettuce are a shallow rooted vegetable. Tomatoes have medium deep roots, and then carrots are a deep root uh, vegetable. They're a root vegetable. Uh, so all of those three together are really good. But let's say you wanna add in potatoes. They're another deep rooted root vegetable. You wanna make sure that you're not planting them next to the carrots. You wanna keep them separate from each other so that they're not competing for nutrients. And along those same lines, you wanna make sure that there are nutrients in your soil for your plants to take up. I always add Biotone starter fertilizer into my raised beds and my containers. In fact, I added it to this container before I planted, and it gives the plants a really good source of nutrients to start growing from, and it's a slow feed, which I really like. And then I follow it up with Garden Tone later on in the season. Okay, so now I'm gonna take all of these plants out to my garden, get them planted, and then I'll show you where I put them all. All right, guys, we're out at the vegetable garden, and I wanna show you where I planted everything. It's actually the next day. We were having some audio and video 
issues for some reason. So we're going to film this part of the video again. It's actually nicer though. It's overcast, so it's not as bright and sunny. Um, so this is where I put the first two. I actually realized how much stuff I have in this vegetable garden already because I had a hard time finding places for all these plants. But I tucked the basils in here next to the tomato because like I said, it'll get rid of the tomato or repel the tomato hornworm. Right at the end of the bed, I planted my nasturtiums and these will be really pretty right here, I think, because they'll kind of spill over the edge. I actually think it'd be really pretty to do in the end, edge of this bed as well. So it kind of mirrors each other. But these act as a host plant for aphids. So if aphids come into the garden, they'll be really attracted to this plant. Um, so they'll kind of like all cut, like flock toward this plant. And it'll be very easy to take care of them that way. The next grouping of plants is right over here. I've got my marigolds. And again, these repel insects. I guess I could have just said that all of these kind of take care of insects. Everything I brought home is actually very compatible with everything else in the garden space. So it really didn't matter where I put it. It just, you know, they all kind of do the same thing. The uh, marigolds, like I said, repel insects next to another tomato. So I think we're good there. And then the last thing I have in here is my pot of chives. Um, and I put these in a pot because chives spread everywhere. And I thought it would be a good idea to put it somewhere where they were contained because I didn't want to commit any space in a raised bed for that. And if I'm having a particular problem with a crop somewhere in the garden, I can easily pick this up and move it close to that crop. So I hope that this video serves as kind of a cursory overview of companion planting. The information I gave you is extremely basic, but that's kind of what I wanted this video to be, just kind of an introduction to what companion planting is with a few ideas, uh, but it's a huge, huge topic. There's so much detail uh, and it's really interesting and fascinating to learn about how plants interact with each other and why not? You know, why not plant your stuff? If you're gonna plant it anyway, figure out what's known to do well together and plant it like that so that maybe they can benefit one another. And it's really easy to find more information. There's tons of information on the internet. Just simple Google search of companion planting or companion planting tomatoes, companion planting beans, and you'll find tons of great guides. So anyway, guys, that is it for this video. Hope it was helpful and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.